Hey dear tech friend, it's good to see you back on the channel Tech with Marco. I'm Marco, I'm a software developer and a DevOps engineer. And uh, this is now my fourth attempt to record this video because in the last three attempts, uh, the camera turned off because it was too hot. Um, but anyways, when I started this YouTube channel, I mainly started with some tutorials about Docker with the reverse proxy traffic. And I got some comments about some security topics in there, which I would now like to discuss in the video and uh, demonstrate how you could get rid of these security issues. So if you don't know what traffic is, um, I made some tutorials about that. I made sure I make sure to link that here in one of this corner up here, be not below, but uh, up in the corner here. So make sure to check that out. And if you have completed the tutorial and make sure to come back to improve your setup security wise. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I quickly show you an example of what I'm meaning here. So this is just an ordinary uh, example of traffic of a Docker Compose file here. And the traffic container gets the um, Docker socket mounted into uh, its volume section. So with that mount here, the traffic container is able to interact with other Docker containers. And why is that important here? So traffic is a reverse proxy. So this means the reverse proxy is standing in front of the container you want to make accessible for others or for yourself. So every request is coming to traffic and traffic is then knowing where to route this request to. So because we're using Docker containers here, traffic needs to know some information about Docker containers. So that's the reason why traffic has this Docker socket mounted into its volumes. But the security concern here is now that because traffic is most in most cases publicly accessible, that an attacker could get control of this container and then uh, interact with the underlying host system through the Docker mount. Uh, through the Docker socket mount. And that's kind of bad because you don't actually want to have that. So in order to mitigate this problem, I made a bit of research what you could do about it. And I came across a project which is called Docker socket proxy. So what is actually the Docker socket proxy doing? Uh, let's just skim through the readme here. And it's saying this is a security enhanced proxy for the Docker socket. And why? Because giving access to a Docker socket could mean giving root access to your host or even the whole swarm. But some services require in so um, hooking into the socket to react to events, etc. So that is what traffic is doing. It's reading different Docker container information and then using that to um, yeah, make the traffic reverse proxy magic happen. <laughs> But using that proxy lets you block anything you could consider those services should not do. So with the Docker socket mounted into the traffic container, uh, traf the traffic container would theoretically be able to interact with different uh, APIs of the Docker socket. So you could read different host information and stuff like that. But we usually don't want to have that in our case. So uh, what we're doing now is with the Docker socket proxy, we are restricting that access to only co reading container information. So let's go through some example here. Um, I just copied the example here to demonstrate how that works. So I'm starting a Docker container now. And as you can see, we have the Docker proxy running now. And with the Docker command up here, um, I am interacting with the Docker socket on my host machine. But we could change this behavior now with the um, Docker host variable. So because I made some port mappings here of the 2375 ports uh, of my local machine to the 2375 port of this uh, just started Docker container, I now have a kind of security layer between me interacting with this Docker command here and reading or getting information about the Docker mount, uh, the Docker socket mount. Because when I'm now typing Docker and some other commands, I'm now going through this just started container here. And I didn't specify any writes this container should have to interact with the Docker API. So as you can see, we get a 403 forbidden. And that means uh, this container is denying the request to read information about Docker containers. So this is quite nice because then we could just change that behavior for traffic and only allow traffic to read information about containers. 
but not read information about our underlying host system. A quick break from my sponsor. Uh, just kidding, I don't have a sponsor yet. But I just wanted to mention if you want to have that cool, nice looking terminal setup, I just made a video about that and I make sure to link that up here somewhere in one of these corners. So yeah, check it out. And now let's continue. So I'm closing down the Docker container here and now no, no Docker container is running. Uh, let's check how that works with traffic. So I have the basic Docker Compose traffic example here with an extra uh, whoami service to have a working service. So let's create our docker compose sample file here. As you can see here in line 18, uh, traffic is by default mounting our docker socket into the docker socket uh, of the traffic container. But we don't want to have that, so we're deleting that line. And now we are starting this setup here. And let's access our localhost traffic dashboard. And as you can see, we have two HTTP routers here. And those services are only internal. That means we don't see this whoami container in our dashboard. So now you might ask, okay, how do I integrate that now? Um, I am creating a Docker socket proxy, ser proxy service here with my image of this uh, Docker socket proxy here. The container name is Docker socket proxy. And what we need to do now is because this Docker socket proxy here needs to interact with our Docker uh, socket on the host machine, we still need to do the volume mount here. But uh, let's do some port mappings here. Because uh, this port of the Docker socket proxy is now uh, accessible in this Docker compose file network. So that means uh, traffic is now able to access this Docker socket proxy here. But it's not able to access it before we um, tell uh, before we tell traffic to use that endpoint. And this one is available at TCP uh, docker minus socket minus proxy at the port to 2375 and now traffic communicates to the docker socket through this docker proxy. So let's restart our setup. And now you already see that we have some log errors here of 403 forbidden in our uh, con in our logs here. So Let's reload our dashboard and what a surprise, we still don't see uh, our who am I service here because traffic is still not able to gain information about the container section of the Docker API. In order to have that, we need to configure an environment variable and this one is named containers. And we enable that by setting that one to one. Default is zero, zero means no, but we don't, we want yes, so we set a one. Let's restart our setup here. And surprise now, we see our whoami.localhost container. And now we can see the journey of the requests which are happening. So traffic tries to get access to container information through this proxy here. This one is getting that request and saying, okay, I'm able to read containers. So I can give information about this who am I container. Now we can quite easily access our service here. And easier is that you are able to uh, improve your security setup here because then traffic is only able to speak to the Docker socket via our proxy in this case. And we could also extend our writes at the Docker socket proxy here. So let's have a look what we can set here. By default, 
authentication secrets and post of the uh, Docker API are disabled and only get and head operations are allowed. And um, so we can say we could enable um, getting information about the build API section, the commit API section, the volume section, the system section, network section and stuff like that. So you could play around with it. Uh, in the most cases, it's quite straightforward, but sometimes, um, for example, Watchtower, I think, because Watchtower needs to uh, start and stop uh, containers. I think you need post writes, but in the basic setup with traffic, a get of container information is enough. So I really recommend using that Docker socket proxy. Uh, I'm also still in the phase of uh, going through all of my different setups and integrate the Docker socket proxy. Uh, yeah, I think it's just an easy improvement of your security stack. And uh, yeah, you can leave me a comment if you've already done that. Or you can also leave me a comment uh, on different topics I should cover in my next videos because uh, I now try to upload more regularly and uh, I'm still figuring out what to do and uh, what to showcase and stuff like that. So if you're also interested in software development, I'm thinking about um, basic Python or Java examples. And you could even then take these um, yourself programmed services and put them into Docker containers and uh, make them accessible in the World Wide Web <laughs> via traffic, for example. So if you have any wishes, I'm happy to receive comments about that. And uh, yeah, I hope that made my point clear about Docker security and how you could improve it with just a Docker socket proxy. And uh, yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.